Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, friends, all protocol observed. Greetings and a very warm welcome. I'm Sabine Alkire, and I'm deeply honored to be one of the moderators of this side event organized by the Federal Republic of Nigeria with the United Nations Development Program, the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network, and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, OPI, at the University of Oxford. It is tempting in today's world teeming with turmoil, with emergencies and grave dangers, to live, leave attention to poverty reduction and other long-term development priorities for a sunny day. But as we heard the Sec Secretary General say, these cannot wait. They cannot be left for tomorrow. Addressing multidimensional poverty today is not, however, for the faint-hearted. We need hope, he said. And more, we need action. Today, we listen to true leaders, leaders in terms of their professional position and their intellectual orientation, to hear how they are working with determination and invention to change lives and empower girls and boys, women and men, whose lives are battered and marred by deprivations be it in education or connectivity, food, housing, or security. They show us that despite turmoil, lives can change today. Today's session has an exhilarating bill of leaders to enable us to absorb this orchestra of ideas. The timekeeper, Dr. Kuliana Milovic, will raise a yellow card one minute before speaker's time is up and a red at the time. I look forward greatly to your insights, and I beseech you to share them succinctly. The speaker, speaker order balances protocol with practicality, so I ask your understanding, and given our shared passion for ending poverty, know you will offer it. In particular, in this first session, we will also welcome His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Puerto Rico. For those attending in person, translation is available in Spanish and French. So it is with great anticipation that we now turn to Rola Dashti, Under Secretary General, Executive Secretary of the Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, ASPA, who was our distinguished co host of this event last year for her address. We will be grateful to hear the address of the co-host, or the, the host of this event, uh, a little bit later in the program, but we will tell you more. Thank you, Sabine. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me start with the President by thanking the multidimensional Poverty Peer Network and the Federal Republic of Nigeria for organizing this important event. It's my honor to address you today and share the experience of ASCO in promoting evidence-based development policies and particularly the use of multidimensional poverty and disease. As the world confronts a number of crises, be it health, environment, economic, and political, there is a need for countries to reaffirm the commitment of the Sustainable Development Goals of eradicating poverty in all its dimensions and securing well-being for all. According to the Development Challenge Index, which we will feature in our forthcoming World Development Challenge Report, only 15 countries with around 5% of the world's population a very low level of development challenges. And of the 163 countries assessed, 39 face high and 55 countries face very high development challenges. countries are home to nearly 3.5 billion people, or 35% of the world's population, and most of them reside in middle-income countries. As you all know, even prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Arab region 
these major development challenges include the most significantly armed conflicts, low per capita growth, narrowing fiscal space, and high unemployment, particularly among youth and women. The pandemic has exacerbated these challenges and our simultaneous indicate uh, and, uh, and our simulations indicate poverty, whether based on income or multidimensional measures spiked during the period 2019-2021. According to our latest projections, one third of the Arab region's population is now estimated to be under national thresholds of income poverty. Moreover, income poverty is projected to keep rising in the coming two years, up to 34% in 2024. This is in contrast to the period up to 2019, which showed a decline in income poverty. With these challenges in mind, ASPA has made poverty reduction a major objective of its strategic framework. Thus, in collaboration with OFI, UNDP, and UNICEF, we are supporting many Arab countries in designing national multidimensional poverty indices, which allows policymakers to more accurately address the simultaneous deprivations experienced by the poor. For example, ASQA is jointly producing new poverty reduction strategies with Palestinian authorities. These policies address all dimensions of the national multidimensional poverty index of Palestine. Likewise, with the government of Egypt, Iraq, Somalia, ASQA has utilized its multidimensional poverty index assist tool, MAT, to guide member states in constructing national multidimensional poverty indices using advanced diagnostics and machine learning. Both these national MPIs will be launched shortly and ASQA will assist member states in formulating adequate policies as informed by the new national MPIs. Your Excellencies, however necessary, analytical tools such as the MPI are insufficient to reduce poverty. The challenge for a policymaker is not only to identify, based on these tools, the fundamental drivers of multidimensional poverty and vulnerability, but also to act and design poverty reduction policies based on this knowledge. Let me share with you three major policy priorities. In light of the lessons learned from the pandemic, the first prescription is to re-examine policies, strategies, and capacities of the health systems, responding to the existing health demands, as well as unexpected shocks. This calls for improving quality and affordability of service, reorienting health service systems towards prevention and investment in public health sector, including expansion of capacities and facilities of hospitals and primarily health clinics. Related to health, strong investments in water, sanitation, reliable electricity, and child nutrition are also essential to make progress in reducing multidimensional poverty and multidimensional child poverty. Second, as argued in our World Development Challenge report, the focus must shift from quantity to quality education by improving teacher qualifications and remunerations and investing more in learning outcomes in early grades and school retention, particularly in rural areas and in LDCs. Learning approaches that prioritize life skills and citizenship education are critical. In most countries, this will entail harnessing skills needed for the jobs of the future, taking into account challenges caused by the fourth industrial revolution. Doing this right would address many of the social and economic policy drivers of multidimensional poverty. 
ladies and gentlemen, the implementation of these policies require the presence of strong and effective institutions, especially in many of the poorest countries. Hence, the third policy priority is to build resilience and institutional capacity to manage risk and vulnerability. For example, at the household level, social protection systems must be strengthened, expanding and deepening their effective coverage. At the national level, technologies should be implemented to help countries with limited capacities to establish mechanisms and early warning systems that analyze threats and risks, especially within their environment and food systems. Your Excellencies, I wish finally to ensure our commitment to support member states to reduce multidimensional poverty and leave no one behind, and to continue to collaborate with all partners and stakeholders to provide evidence-based policies. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Rola powerfully shared how ESQUA has made poverty reduction a major objective of its strategic framework, be it in Palestine or Somalia, Egypt or Iraq. ESQUA are providing analytical tools in measurement and budgeting. So the MPI becomes a fundamental tool to improve policy design, not only for the poor, but also for the middle class. She also took the next step in arguing that ending multidimensional poverty requires priority investments in health systems, quality education, social protection, and technology. As you will have noticed, Nigeria's team in their wisdom focused this event not only on poverty, but also on securing well-being. In tough times, it is hope, hope not just for respite, but hope that we may thrive, deeply thrive, that drives change. There is no better voice to articulate the balance between determined actions to end poverty and visionary steps to build well-being than Bhutan. We are pleased to invite His Excellency Tandi Dorji to deliver an address of the Honorable Prime Minister of Bhutan. Your Excellency Mohammed Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, we live in historic times. Less than three years ago, humankind came to a pause in an unimaginable way. Travel stopped, offices shut, families congregated. Research surged. Together, we weathered the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite incredible breakthroughs in policy, medical science, and digital connectivity, there were terrible casualties. And surges continue to ricochet across cities and countries, keeping us always on the guard. Just as the crashing waves of COVID seem to be receding, now storms have emerged. Inflation veils its head. Political polarization has amplified. Wildfires, floods, famine, war, strike with record strength. Facing into a global recession, our institutions and societies seem to hang in the balance. In such times, it would be natural to transition to emergency mode. Each country for itself, each person for himself or herself, it would be natural to lose perspective. So I'm grateful to His Excellency President Buhari for convening this wise event in which we consider both human poverty and well-being and think of how to retake the initiative to advance both our immediate survival and our profound horizons together. My country, Bhutan, is a small country in the Himalayas surrounded by India and China. We rely upon tourism, so the COVID-19 pandemic has a debilitating effect on our economy and society. Our natural, national resolve to come out of the pandemic wiser and stronger. We may offer two reflections to this August gathering. The first concerns well-being. In the 1970s, our poor king articulated our distinct national aim of gross national happiness or GNH in the firm belief that the purpose of development must be to promote happiness at all levels, individuals, community, and national without compromising our environment, culture, and tradition. No other development model does it as holistically, sustainably, and meaningfully as GNH does, placing the well-being of the people at the heart of development. 
economic growth is vitally important to incentivize innovation and to be rich. But it is not our fundamental aim. It is not our dream. Our aim is development with values. Our dream is to advance without sacrificing profundity. It is to achieve high income without letting our relationships of courtesy and caring collapse. It is to lead in digital technologies, yet also to maintain our forests and streams unpolluted. It is for our youth to make and learn from other cultures and also to love our new our traditional songs and dances. It is to modernize reject without neglecting our monasteries with the Olympian spiritual practices so that our treasury of wisdom never weakens or becomes extinct. This is not easy. Yet, like us in each country, there also has well things of profound wisdom, creativity, and insight that we can and must remember, replenish, and grow upon. Coming to the second focus of this high-level side event, which is measurement, since 2008, indicators and tools have supported the implementation of the concept of GNH. We measure GNH using an innovative adaptation of the MPI methodology. We start with each person and assess whether he or she enjoys sufficient causes and conditions of happiness across predatory indicators in nine domains. The domains span conventional areas like health, education, and living standards, and unconventional ones like psychological well being, time use, cultural diversity, and resilience, good governance, community vitality, and ecological diversity and resilience. If a person has sufficient achievements in at least two thirds of the domain, she is moderately happy. If 77% or more deeply happy, we study how GNS varies by gender by geographical area, by occupation and age, and how it changes over time. I'm pleased to announce that the 2022 nationwide GNA GNH survey is currently being finalized and results are expected soon. Our GNH index and the findings of GNH surveys shape our planning and policy. For example, the national key result areas of several five-year plans were framed based on GNH. To ensure policy coherence, we assess the impact of each new policy on GNH using a 22 variable GNH policy screening tool. We use the GNH index score for local resource allocation. Thus, our vision of GNH, now for almost half a century, is now implemented using modern tools to nurture a profound yet practical vision of well being. As for poverty, in fact, in 2010, Bhutan became the first country in the world to launch the MPI using the AF methodology. We used our MPI for budgeting across districts, for targeting poor households, and for nudging change. Our reduction of multidimensional poverty was lightning fast, so that by 2017, only 5.8% of our people were MPI poor. We are finalizing the 2022 Bhutan Living Standards Survey and will soon release an updated MPI that shows our situation post pandemic and because we reduce our MPI strongly over the past decade, we have also designed and will publish a moderate MPI with more ambitious indicators in order to match the high aspirations our people now have for their lives. Friends, we live in historic times, yet the daunting challenges needed to cause us to lose perspective. When we reopen our treasury of human wisdom and extend our hearts and hands to the poor and vulnerable, we can retake the initiative navigate today's challenges with grace and courage and encourage one another to do so. I thank you for your attention. Estima. The Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs showed how Bhutan uses an NPI and an adapted formulation to, to measure gross national happiness. But he challenged us to address poverty without sacrificing profundity, a tall order. And he called on us to remember and replenish our own wellsprings of wisdom and creativity, for from these our own solutions will arise. You sounded a deep and resonant call, truly personal and truly universal. Thank you. We are now grateful to invite Haoliang Zhu, 
Assistant Secretary General, Assistant Administrator of UNDP, and Director of its Bureau for Policy and Program Support to offer his address. Thank you very much, Sabina. Uh, it is really a uh, pleasure to uh, organize uh, this event again with uh, OFI and also with uh, the multidimensional uh, poverty peer network, Gonzalo, and uh, with uh, the support of the government of Nigeria this year. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, let me uh, maybe make very three you know, brief points as time is short. In the first, I think the MPI uh, works. Okay. And uh, uh, the, this year's uh, human development report that we published recently uh, showed that uh, for the first time in 32 years, the human development uh, index, human development index declined for the first time for two years in a row. Right. This really confirms that uh, you know, when we look at uh, development, we have to go beyond uh, income. Right? We really have to go beyond the average and we have to look at the future as well. Right? And uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic also showed that we have a complex numbers of countries which are using multidimensional measures of poverty to target those who are most vulnerable, those who are left behind. We have a lot of countries that are using this to increase the coverage of social protection vertically and horizontally significantly. So what are the multidimensional aspects of this? Right? Because we're not just look at health education as fundamental you know, uh, needs right, of, or areas of deprivation. But other areas that countries are increasing look at right, uh, are social protection, right, decent employment, access to digital technology, financial inclusion, and you know, gender you know, equality gaps. Right? So the multidimensional poverty measures have really been increasing accepted. So I think this is uh, one point that I want to make. We needed to just to do more of this. Now this year's human development report, right, managing really uncertainties in right, uncertain times, in uncertain times, right? It is proposing to focus you know, uh, measures on insurance, for example, right? innovation and investment. So multidimensional poverty, multidimensional vulnerability index are instruments that can help us you know, really do more you know, to support the poor. And uh, uh, the second point very quickly is that I want to just mention a few
este importante evento que reúne a los líderes mundiales y destacados funcionarios e invitados de las más reconocidas organizaciones internacionales en torno a un tema tan relevante como es la pobreza multidimensional. Quiero destacar la importancia del liderazgo político para promover el bienestar de los pueblos e impulsar la erradicación de la pobreza que afecta a más de 700 millones de personas en el mundo. Consideramos que el índice de pobreza multidimensional es una herramienta para la identificación de las carencias de nuestras hermanas, hermanos más pobres y vulnerables de cada país. Desde el Ministerio de Desarrollo e Inclusión Social, del cual soy ministra de Estado, buscamos soluciones y acciones innovadoras en materia de políticas públicas a través de, por ejemplo, transferencias directas como el bono Yanapay, el apoyo alimentario a los comedores populares y las ollas comunes. Estas intervenciones, entre otras, permitió mitigar la pobreza rural en 14.7 puntos porcentuales y en el ámbito urbano en 8.7 puntos porcentuales. Así, nuestro gobierno reafirma el compromiso con el logro de los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible de las Naciones Unidas. Asimismo, hemos incorporado en la Política Nacional de Desarrollo e Inclusión Social del Ministerio la perspectiva de la pobreza multidimensional, la cual impulsará el rediseño de nuestros programas sociales, permitiendo una mejor asignación presupuestal con el fin de focalizar eficientemente las intervenciones gubernamentales. Y afirmamos nuestro compromiso con la implementación de este innovador sistema de medición de la pobreza que en América Latina alcanza a más de 200 millones de personas, según la CEPAL. Agradezco la invitación a este magno evento y felicito a los organizadores de este panel, en especial a la Universidad de Oxford, por promover este nuevo enfoque orientado a una comprensión más amplia de un fenómeno complejo y multicausal. Hago votos por multiplicar los esfuerzos que hacen los líderes mundiales por promover la colaboración y la cooperación en esta lucha contra la pobreza, que es nuestro enemigo común. También tengo la esperanza de que podamos vivir en un mundo más justo, con programas sociales que puedan tener el apoyo de cada uno de sus gobiernos con rostro humano y con, un mayor, con una mayor bienestar para nuestros pueblos. A cada uno de ustedes, muchas gracias y Dios los bendiga. Dina's address portrayed what Amartya Sen might refer to as constructive impatience, a very powerful force for good that does not permit those in power to become coolly accustomed to the distress of the impoverished. In fact, She has the distinction of being the only vice president to take OFI's executive education course led by Michelle Machet. We are so grateful for your swift grasp of how MPI can make visible your changes for your vision and apt insistence. I would like to warmly welcome to the dais Her Excellency, the Minister of Finance of Nigeria, Zainet Shamsuna Ahmed. Uh, welcome, Your Excellency. Friend, friends, I mentioned that we are balancing protocol with uh, uh, urgencies, and the time of COVID has made us uh, more forgiving and more flexible. So I have the great honor at this point to invite His Excellency Ardando André Tinoco, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Costa Rica, to share his remarks. And then we will resume with the program as printed. Your Excellency. Yes. Hello. Su Excelencia Mohamed Buhari, Presidente de la República Federal de Nigeria. Of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellencies, Ministers of State and Representatives of International Organizations, Panelists, Ladies and Gentlemen, 
on behalf of the government of Costa Rica and its president, Rodrigo Chavez Robles. I would like to thank President Buhari and a multidimensional poverty network for the invitation to participate in this event, which is especially important given the circumstances that our world is going through today. All the countries that have met this week for the United Nations General Assembly committed ourselves seven years ago to the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. That includes as its first objective, the eradication of poverty in all its forms and dimensions, which is in turn a clear and personal call to address poverty as a multi-dimensional phenomenon that goes beyond lack of income. The same year, 2015, Costa Rica formally established the Multi-Dimensional Poverty Index, MPI, as an official measure of poverty, complementary to monetary measures. We were one of the first Latin American countries to take that step. Since its launch, Costa Rica's MPI has estimate has been estimated every year by the Statistics and Census Institute, yielding important information that allows us to appreciate the evolution of poverty and its composition over time. Costa Rica's MPI includes important innovations that have become a reference for other countries, such as the inclusion of gender indicators and of access to the internet and solid investments in social protection and labor. In addition, we have experience in targeting and efforts to create national budgets based on the MPI. The frontal battle against poverty is one of the main axes of our government, and we recognize the important role of the multidimensional poverty index as a key, key tool to materialize this in public policy actions that allow, allow all Costa Ricans to fully develop their cap capacities, thus ensuring not to leave anybody behind on the path of sustainable development. However, the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on human development of our peoples worsened by an increase in migration and forced displacements forced us to broaden our social protection systems in terms of coverage and social services that we offer. As such, the data and experience in the implementation of the MPI are an opportunity to reassess uh, financing reallocation, recognizing the multidimensional nature of uh, poverty that allow us to reduce inequalities and have a realistic and comprehensive view of the potentials and needs of each country. I re reiterate our gratitude for the opportunity to share the experience of Costa Rica and to be able to learn from the efforts carried out by the countries of the multi-dimensional poverty network to put an end to poverty in all its forms and dimensions. Thank you very much for your attention. So grateful to the minister for articulating um, Costa Rica's commitment to ending poverty in all its forms, using the MPI to reevaluate budget allocation and to fight inequality, leaving no one behind. Thank you so much. We now turn to Mansour Muftar, the Vice President of the Islamic Development Bank, and invite his reflections. Thank you very much, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have less than a decade to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, yet progress towards the SDGs remains mired with uncertainties, and it frequently suffers setbacks, even reversals by crises that require equally urgent responses. This, to say the least, is disheartening and disconcerting. It is encouraging, though, 
that further reversals in the global fight against poverty can be prevented through evidence-based innovative solutions centered on creating a just and equal society for all. At the Islamic Development Bank, in line with our vision, which emphasizes human dignity, reinforced by the aspirations of our member countries, tackling poverty and building resilience and driving green economic growth are among the priorities enshrined in our realigned strategy, which we launched recently. Ladies and gentlemen, the combined effect of health and economic crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic have resulted in rising poverty and widening inequalities. As a result of these inequalities, the poor continue to struggle with the aftershocks of the pandemic. This is being exacerbated by the impact of climate change, which is manifesting itself more frequently. The poverty challenge has also been uh, uh, accentuated recently by the East European crisis, which puts additional pressure on food security and debt levels. The fight against poverty leaves no space for trial and error, and it necessitates a firm and holistic approach to actualize effective, targeted, and comprehensive platforms. Multi sectoral policies and multi stakeholder interventions must be at the heart of our efforts to end poverty in its multifaceted forms and dimensions. To generate greater impact, the path towards inclusive growth must start with understanding with an understanding of the lived experiences of poor people by measuring multidimensional poverty. Given that one in three people in Islamic Development Bank's 57 member countries live in and are living multidimensional poverty, we have partnered productively with Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative to produce data-driven research in support of evidence-based policy making and implementation. As part of this collaboration, the Islamic Development Bank Institute and the OPHI have thus far published six poverty briefs and will soon be launching our seventh poverty brief, which focuses on Afghanistan to support the Afghanistan, Afghanistan Humanitarian Trust Fund interventions, which we are managing. Our collaborative studies have found that select member countries have reduced multidimensional poverty significantly over the years. There is therefore promise in this approach. Tracking multidimensional poverty, in addition to income poverty, provides us with an analysis of greater depth and allows us to identify rich patterns among success stories, which we could adopt for other member countries. And there is hope. Our studies reveal that reducing poverty remains possible despite high initial levels of poverty. The pandemic and the current food crisis have all confirmed the fact that the poor are almost the most vulnerable disproportionately the most disproportionately affected by crisis. Therefore, there is a need for us to reaffirm our commitment to the SDGs to eradicate poverty in all its dimensions and secure an inclusive and sustainable well-being for all. With less than a decade to achieve the 2030 agenda, let us work collaboratively to maximize the impact of our joint efforts, efforts for our people. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Islamic Development Bank has been an inventive partner, and I'd like to highlight in particular the collaborative briefing on Afghanistan they supported with UNICEF, UNINDP, and OFI. They pushed us rightly to go back to the data and pull out tangible details. Exactly how many women only lacked prenatal checkups, but gave birth in a good facility with trained help, but how many lacked all three conditions? Or of people lacking water in the provinces, which source of water were they using that was not safe? We together mapped the top four priorities for each province in Afghanistan using the most recent data 
and simulated the way these likely changed in the past year. Your Excellency Muhtar, we are truly grateful for the Islamic Development Bank for pushing us to a new level of analytical policy clarity and hope that it may serve. We now turn to His Excellency Felix Uyoya, Vice President of El Salvador, for his remarks. It is a pleasure for me to address to you at this high level event of the United Nations. Uh, thank you to Sabina Akiri for the invitation and the President of Nigeria, Mr. Muhammadu Bahari for this effort to eradicate poverty worldwide through this multidimensional poverty network, MPPN, a global organization with emphasis on poverty measurement, providing technically support, training, and documentation. The poverty in El Salvador has been a social and a structural problem that we have carried on for decades. And unfortunately, no previous governments have been interested in solving it. In the government of President Nayib Bukele, we are fully convinced that poverty reduction is a fundamental factor in order to make progress in other, to, in other areas. For this reason, since we took the reign of this country, the main objective has been to reduce poverty at the minimum expression. We are making uh, real noticeable changes. We are working hard to pay off the historical debts that our population deserves. On July of this year, we present in the United Nations in New York, the second voluntary national review of the implementation process of the Sustainable Development Goals in El Salvador in 2022. At this high level event, El Salvador was absolutely grateful to present to the world all the advances that we have get in this administration of President Bukele. Just to tell us a little idea how we are approaching to the implementation of the ODS, we would like to let you know that we prioritize 10 over the 17 goals in order to make focus in our administration in the implementation of these 10 goals. The first was, as you know, the SGD number one, the end of poverty. Then the second of zero hunger, the third health and well-being, well the fourth quality education, the fifth gender equality, the clean water and sanitation, then decent work and economic growth and climate action, then peace, justice and a strong institution. And finally, the partnership for achieving the goals. Acting all together the institution of the government in implementing these 10 prioritized goals, we think that we are fulfilling not only this agenda for the year 2030, but also for our people, for our population that deserve to be treated not only as a population at large, but in particular, sector by sector, peasants, workers, employees, any, any sector of society has taken our attention and we are dealing with that. One of the main issues has been to provide security to our people because no one of these goals could be implemented if we still have these insecurity problems in our communities. Before ending this message, I would like to remark that in the way to achieve all these goals, we want to announce to you that we have approved different plans to implement different policies toward these objectives. One of them is the master plan to recover agriculture and these stocks. This is a way to deal with the hunger and the poverty solution, and also if we bring back into the agricultural activities, we create more jobs in the rural areas, and we will be able to avoid the forced immigration, which is one of the principal causes of this immigration, because the lack of opportunities in the rural areas in our country, because the policies implemented for previous government that they abandoned the agriculture, we are taking over 
and we have implemented this new strategic plan to recover agriculture. But because we are also implementing a national equality plan, we are also trying to close the gap uh, in the digital field. This is a challenge of our government to teach in the public schools with new uh, laptops and tablets that has been freely delivered to all the students and teachers in the public system. Every kid, every professor in the classroom, they have a laptop or a tablet given by free for the government. That is preparing our country to the jump into the post industrial revolution and the digital era. And also, I would like to remark the master plan for the support uh, to the early childhood, which is a program implemented by the First Lady uh, with the Better Feeding Program, which was also announced here uh, in New York in, in the presentation that she did uh, to present this program. So this is just <clears throat> a sample of the mission that this government has been taken in order to achieve the strategic goal, the sustainable development goals. So uh, thank you for allowing me to send you this message. And of course, uh, my best wishes uh, for the success of this program. And again, uh, my gratitude and all my best uh, wishes to the president of Nigeria. And I am pretty sure that this program will succeed in the leadership of this remarkable leader from the African continent. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President, for your full commitment to reducing multidimensional poverty in El Salvador, a country that updates its MPI every year and whose MPI includes security. He shared how El Salvador prioritizes MPI among the SDGs and profiled their commitments in this year's VNR, joining 41 countries that profiled multidimensional poverty in 53 VNRs up through last year. So we hope that his efforts bear much fruit. I'm truly delighted to call upon the closing speaker of this leadership panel, Her Excellency Dr. Zainet Shamsuna Ahmed, the Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to deliver a speech on behalf of His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our gracious host. Your Excellency. Your Excellencies, the Prime Minister, Royal Government of Bhutan, Your Excellency, the Vice President of Peru and the Vice President of El Salvador, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Islamic Development Bank, the Assistant Secretary General of the UNDP, Honorable Ministers specifically of uh, Egypt, Cambodia, Costa Rica, Pakistan, Mexico, Spain, heads of UN agencies, heads of development in, uh, finance institutions, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to represent His Excellency, the Vice, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is currently attending another event. And I apologize for coming late because I'm also coming from there. Excellencies, as we have heard throughout this week, the world is in turmoil. We are acutely aware of the environmental catastrophes, the food and fuel crisis, inflation, austerity, excavated political and nuclear tensions and the tiring weight of the pandemic. In such times, it will be easy to be faint-hearted. It will be easy to turn aside from the poorest and the most vulnerable because our resources are scarce and the multitude of priorities call our attention. We gather here to affirm our commitment 
to the first of the sustainable development goals, which is eradicating poverty in all of its dimensions. During this uh, um, program, we will be sharing our collective trends and our struggles in measuring and untangling the interlinked deprivations that the poorest people experience so that millions can live and transit out of poverty. We will be discussing how innovative and multi-sectoral policies have been used, data from multidimensional poverty indices, our MPIs to eliminate poverty amongst the poorest. And I hope that political leadership, strategic vision, creative hard work of all will inspire us to each live here today with renewed commitment. This year, most of the side events at the UN General Assembly are virtual. But we decided that the topic of reducing multidimensional poverty was so pivotally important that this event had to be held in person. And this, I must thank my colleague, the Nigerian Honorable Minister of State Budget and Planning, Prince uh, Clem Agba, for positioning Nigeria to co-host this important event. I'm also grateful to each of the heads of states and nations and other speakers, whether from government or from international agencies or academia or development finance institutions for being here and for preparing to, sh to share your experience with the world. To continue this exchange, let me share seven lessons as to why Nigeria's multidimensional poverty index is a powerful tool to galvanize action. As a participant in the inaugural launch of the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network, the MPPN, Nigeria has worked on multidimensional poverty for nearly 10 years and has had an official measure for five years now. Last year to early this year, we conducted the first subnational MPI survey across 109 senatorial districts in all of the 36 states of our federation, including the Federal Capital Territory. The report is being finalized for formal launch soon. However, we are at work already to bring within reach strategic areas of action to end poverty that we cannot see why any other tool cannot also be used. And why are we doing this? First. The building blocks of Nigeria's MPIs are a set of deprivations that a person experiences at any particular time. They relate to dimensions like health, education, living standards, work, as well as security. And so the MPI brings under one roof different SDG indicators and forms of poverty, which will help us to bring and break silos and address them together. Nigeria is a large and a diverse country. We're using disaggregated data to show the vast range of the different levels of poverty within our, our society. Looking at these indicators, we can see the precise needs for each state and each senatorial district. We hope to be able to communicate the high resolution MPI data so that it unlocks the intelligent effort by our state governments and our local governments officials to see the exact shape of local poverty and how to dismantle it. As uh, post-pandemic data, it has been integrated within the National Social Register, Nigeria's largest data bank on the poor, on the poor and the vulnerable. This integration will facilitate better targeting and better coordinated response for social interventions so that we're sure that we're leaving no one behind. The MPI is embedded within the medium term national development plan of 2021 to 2026, but also the plan of 2026 to 2030 as a measure and policy tool for poverty reduction. 
Likewise, this year, our Federal Executive Council approved the 2022 to 2025 National Poverty Reduction and Growth Strategy, under which the NPR project is being implemented. The NPR analysis uncovers differences by gender and also by age. So that is to say also by children. Children are a strategic population in terms of size in Nigeria. We are deeply, they are, they are deeply affected by poverty, yet they are also our future. So we are building a young child's NPI, and it includes the national NPI and adds in extra information about early child development, which is information that we need to use to improve their lives and their chances in life. At the federal level, we are set to use the NPR results to influence the allocation of resources, starting from our 2023 budget process to target sectors identified and deprived. The NPI is not our only data and poverty tool, but it shows us the multi-sectoral and multi-dimensional ways before uh, that, that we can deploy to identify deprivation and also to intensify our efforts to, towards relieving sin. When insights provided by the MPI are combined with income and poverty data, it provides a holistic picture of poverty and helps us to shape the path towards prosperity. Allow me at this juncture to reiterate our unwavering commitment to eradicating extreme poverty in Nigeria. This is evidenced by the official establishment of the National Social Safety Nets Coordination Office NASCO in 2016. NASCO is a custodian of our national social register and the largest repository of the poor and vulnerable data in Nigeria. Likewise, we also consolidated the impact made in the lives of over 5 million persons with the implementation of the National Social Investments Program by institutionalizing it under a ministry that we call the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs disaster management and social development. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been intentional with our plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within the next 10 years. We are happy that the NPR will serve as both government, as both a measurement and policy tool to monitor our progress and also to achieve our goals. I'm delighted that the Prime Minister of Bhutan, the land renowned for gross national happiness, has addressed us today and that Kim Samuel will close out by reminding us of the power of social connectedness. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. We are so grateful for your words, for illuminating us and explaining the innovative and really powerful uh, journey that Nigeria is taking towards leading work on multidimensional poverty. This concludes a thrilling leadership panel in which we have heard the candid yet stirring reflections of those steering countries and institutions during these turbulent times. And the we who is listening are people from 43 countries, from different sectors ourselves, and I'm sure many of you would have much to add also. But having this moral focus on reducing poverty in times of stringent fiscal constraints and gaping uncertainties is, as the minister said, not for the faint hearted. But each speaker had the presence of mind and the force of character to forge a new path within their context, being a policy entrepreneur, as the title of the book um, that Haoyan mentioned, UNDP with Gonzalo Hernandez Licona, have been finalizing. So I now turn moderation over to Shola, herself an exemplary leader, strategic and clear, responsive and hardworking, deeply kind and utterly professional to moderate the next session. Shola.
Thank you, Sabina, um, your excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Permit me to quickly recognize uh, the F uh, Mrs. Uh, Miriam Weiss, the special advisor to the president on social investment, who has had a dogged uh, commitment to uh, supporting and championing the cause of the poor and vulnerable in Nigeria. We now turn to the ministerial uh, panel. Uh, this event, uh, which is the first ever uh, MPPN uh, event hosted in a hotel, uh, received generous uh, support from the UNDP and also the federal government of Nigeria. This is because Nigeria is rapidly be emerging as a regional and global uh, leader on the measurement and reduction of uh, multidimensional poverty. I'm pleased uh, to recognize His Excellency uh, Prince Clem Ikanade Agba, Minister of State, Budget and National Planning, and I invite him to uh, deliver his address. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, here ably represented by my sister, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Dr. Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and indeed a great pleasure to welcome you to this event on the Multidimensional Poverty Index, a poverty measurement and policy tool that provides insight on sectors where people experience deprivations, thereby providing an evidence base for the use of data to influence policy decisions. This cannot be overemphasized given the dire need for a data-driven and evidence-based approach that influences policy formulations, budgeting, project design, and implementation. It would interest you to know that the first engagement with the Global MPI team was initiated at ONGA 75 in 2019. Since then, Nigeria has signed on to implement the multidimensional poverty index as a poverty measurement and as a policy tool. It has begun providing insight on sectors where people experience deprivations, thereby facilitating the adoption of evidence-based approach to governance. The report is now due to be launched. I am confident that the findings of the MPI in complementarity with monetary measures will bridge the gap and set us on the path of achieving Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 1. The 2018 Global MPI conducted across 50 countries show pre-COVID monetary poverty figures, but does not provide sub-national data. There is a huge gap for non-monetary deprivations that increase the intensity of vulnerabilities of our citizens. While income and wealth are good indicators of welfare, it has become apparent that a lot of relevant features of human welfare are missed out and focus is only on how much a person earns or consumes. Hence, we conducted a sub-national MPI survey across the 109 senatorial districts to investigate at granular level why there is a disconnect between available social welfare opportunities and its uptake to be used as a policy tool for targeted resource allocation in line with the mandate of our president, His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, to establish catalytic foundation to support 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. The journey to today began during the first phase of implementation of the National Social Investment Program under the office of His Excellency, the Vice President. This was a program oversighted by the Ministry of Budget and National Planning. Poverty is a global phenomenon, and no society is totally immune from it. The phenomenon, however, varies in scale and intensity from one society to another. It depicts a situation whereby an individual, a group, or community lacks the capacity to meet their basic material needs. This unfortunate condition requires in-depth assessment to be able to ascertain the magnitude and the menace this constitutes to development as a way of preferring lasting solutions. This is what the MPI is designed to achieve. The following processes have been made thus far. 
One, the National Bureau of Statistics under the Ministry of Budget and National Planning has completed the first sub-national MPI survey across 109 senatorial districts in all the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. Two, we signed a formal technical partnership agreement with Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiatives, or PHI, proponents of the MPI, which is a standard measurement for SDG1. The MPI is embedded within the Medium Term National Development Plan 2021 to 2025 as a measurement and policy tool for poverty reduction. The Federal Executive Council approved the 2022 to 2025 National Poverty Reduction with Growth Strategy under which the MPI project is being implemented. Why these successes are laudable, we cannot rest on our laurels just yet as the work before us is enormous. First, I solicit the support of all stakeholders as we implement the key activities. Academic papers and policy briefs. The results of the public survey will be open to feedback from practitioners and experts in poverty analysis. We will continue to work both our international partner OFI and local partners in Nigerian universities and NISA. Behavioral insight into poverty. To break the cycle of poverty, it is important that beyond data collection and providing opportunities and enabling policies to probe and understand the cultural or non-economic barriers to uptake of available opportunities. We are partnering with the Nigeria Economic Summit Group to implement this activity under the data demand and use strategy of the MPI. Data-driven resource allocation. The MPI is being used in the allocation of resources for the 2023 budget to targeted sectors identified as deprived. The project will continue to collaborate with the National Social Safety Net Coordinating Office to align data with those on the National Social Register. This alignment will be critical as it will improve the targeting process for beneficiaries of government social intervention. Then project designs, monitor and evaluation. The Ministry of Budget and National Planning will continue to play its oversight role as the government's institution tasked with policy and project designs, as well as the monitoring and evaluation of projects. The MPI affords of the opportunity for systematic tracking of the SDGs to monitor how the MPRGS is contributing to the reduction of poverty in all its forms. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, the result of the MPI will be reported at senatorial district level. There is no doubt that this will be a useful guide for policymakers at the sub-national level in making targeted and impactful interventions where necessary. At this junction, let me take this opportunity to appreciate all stakeholders for making time out of that uh, to be part of this event. This is a clear indication of the enthusiasm developed towards the success of the MPI and by implication, driving multidimensional poverty reduction to secure well-being for all. Thank you very much for that. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, for sharing what we uh, has been uh, a best high view a resolution on the MPI in Nigeria that can be used by national and state actors in every corner. Uh, but thank you uh, also for setting out the, the plans to truly institutionalize the commitment by involving academia and by understanding the culture and building a, a poverty action lab, like you mentioned, and by consolidating government-wide tools and actions. This is uh, quite impressive an agenda. I am now uh, delighted to welcome Her Excellency uh, Ala Helmi uh, El Sahid, uh, the Minister of Planning and Economic Development in Egypt, to, to share our reflection, please. Excellencies, honorable ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed a pleasure to be present today and participate in this high level event on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. I'm honored to be amongst honorable global leaders sharing our strong political will, along with our commitment towards using multidimensional poverty indices to drive poverty reduction, 
inform policy actions and promote well-being for all. Over the years, the world has made considerable progress on fighting poverty and achieving human development. However, this trend was interrupted in 2020 when the COVID-19 pandemic combined with the effects of the geopolitical conflict reversed much of the hard won gains in this respect. Nevertheless, in order to re-establish our positive trajectory, you must take effective policy action that is based on sophisticated evidence. Hence, the multidimensional poverty indices play a pivotal role in this context, acting as an essential monitoring and accountability tool, guiding coordinated policy making. Utilizing MPIs as part of broader efforts to promote a culture of evidence-based policy making is of particular importance to developing countries and has been underscored by the current crisis as policymakers strive to improve outcomes and accountability in the midst of escalating challenges. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in Egypt, the government is firmly committed to ensure an enlightened future for our people and place the country at the forefront of economic, social, and technological advancement. This has been manifested by Egypt's ambitious Vision 2030, which is the national version of the Agenda 2030. Indeed, the government is working diligently to implement such vision and ultimately translate its broad aspirations into tangible outcomes for Egyptians. The government expenditure on social protection has been increasing rapidly over the years. The total spending on social protection schemes over the last seven years have been doubled. Therefore, Egypt was able to take immediate steps in the face of recent crisis, extending social protection and providing conditional crash, cash transfers for less privileged people. The government also has embarked on an ambitious pro project to address multidimensional poverty and transform the lives of more than 55 million Egyptians across 4,500 villages, constituting around half of the total population. This is the Decent Life Initiative. This project has rapidly unfolded to revamp local communities and improve living conditions, making it unprecedented in both its coverage and scale of finance. While the project inherently strives to achieve SDG 1 no poverty, its cross-cutting and comprehensive nature makes it concurrently tackle all the 17 SDGs. The government has also re recently launched the National Project for Family Development under also the patronage of His Excellency the President. The project aims to approach Egypt's chronic population issue from, for the first time from a developmental perspective. Such approach is critical on human capital and enhancing the quality of life for Egyptians. In support of such human development programs, the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development is in a fruitful partnership with the GPAL, launched the Egypt Impact Lab, which aims at strengthening the effectiveness of Egypt's poverty reduction policies by rigorously evaluating innovative government programs and using results to inform skill decisions. Additionally, the government is working very hard to prepare a nationally multidimensional poverty index with collaboration among stakeholders. On top of them is the ESQA, as mentioned by my colleague, Dr. Roy. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is the responsibility and even the right of each and every one of us to visualize a world without poverty and to join forces and work together, making this vision not just a dream, but a reality evidence-driven policy-making developed from meticulously gathered accurate data is essential to successfully accomplish such a goal. We all have the chance through collaboration and partnership to join in the shared objective of creating a safer and more stable future for our people so that multidimensional poverty can become a thing of the past. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency Hala, for sharing how uh, Egypt uh, works on the MPI. Uh, and you have a report, I understand, that is uh, to be launched uh, very shortly, which would make visible 
Egypt's uh, remarkable transformations that happened uh, via strong investment through the Descent Life Initiative that you've mentioned that about half of the population uh, are being targeted. And of course, that will be the next phase of cost effective policies and will be integrated in its impact evaluation. We look forward to, of course, you convening another MPPN uh, event uh, next year. I now call on Samhen Boros, uh, the minister attached to the uh, Prime Minister and Secretary of State of the Ministry of Social Affairs, uh, uh, Veteran and Youth Rehabilitation of Cambodia to deliver his remarks. Sabina, um, Michelle, Gonzalo, thank you for inviting me to be here and thank you, Mr. President. Mr. I started this, my, my last year intervention with, uh, are we making policy blind? This year, I will start with, are we trapped in our own economic success? For decades, poverty reduction in Cambodia has been driven by its accelerated economic growth. According to the most recent Human Development Report launched uh, a few weeks ago in the last 30 years, Cambodia's real gross national income per capita four-folded, increased from 1,008 in 1990 to $4,078 in 2021. Thanks for being one of the most fastest growing economy in the world for the last 30 years, Cambodia was able to reduce monetary poverty rate by more than half just 12 years from 47.8% in 2007 to around 17.8% in 2019. Alongside with an unprecedented investment in poverty reduction program. However, economic growth by itself won't be enough to tackle the remaining deprivation. For this, we need the data that reveal the different kind of deprivation or vulnerability in prevalence and how these deprivation prevent people to prosper and flourish to inform policy, otherwise we will be doing policy blindly. Thanks to the support of UNP Cambodia, I was invited to participate in the OP executive education program focused on how to use MPI uh, to guide policy, Sabina, of course. I was exposed to how this powerful tool based on the Kairi Foster methodology to help us to put our beloved citizen deprivation in the way they experience it at the forefront of our policy making decision. Today, I'm glad to share with all of, uh, I'm glad to share with all of you that the Ministry of Planning in working with UNDP, Line Ministry, and other development partner to produce a national multi-dimensional vulnerability index. Of course, the word that I mentioned here is we try to make sure we actually build an MPI in Cambodia, but rather not to confuse people, uh, we make sure that we want the data to be there available for us to use. We're actually using words that are uh, carefully uh, scripted to make sure that uh, there's no confusion of, uh, of what is the economic growth in Cambodia has been doing. So we changed the name to multi vulnerability index instead. And this is based on a kind of foster methodology. The index will be particularly helpful to track the progress of key deprivation indicators that are challenging our beloved citizen livelihood and well-being. From the lens of my ministry's mandate, the social assistance operator, one of our core mandate is working toward operationalizing measure to enhance social welfare and poverty reduction through provision of social assistance programs, both cash and not on cash transfer to poor and vulnerable households. But so far, social policy has been implemented separately education on its side, health on its side, and so on. One of the great advantage of having national MVI, multi vulnerability index, in this opportunity to break the silo approach, to open door, to work more collaborative in a systematic approach, whereby government ministry from national and sub-national level can sit down together to discuss priority collaboration and budget alignment to address these deprivation and vulnerability. The national dimensional vulnerability index is now well advanced, in our international deliberation process. And hopefully before the end of the year, we will be officially, I would say that maybe in mid term, uh, by the end of uh, mid year next year, by 2023, uh, <laughs> uh, will be, uh, uh, <clears throat> be officially adopted as a complement monetary poverty measure to inform our poverty and vulnerability reduction strategy in the country. The adoption of the national MVI is a priority by for my government. With this tool, my government will be able to design policy intervention accurately to respond to the need and priority of the poor and vulnerable household. With it, we won't make 
policy blindly anymore, ensuring that we leave no one behind. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Minister, for the insightful uh, perspective and steering act, uh, act, account of the MPI development in your country. We look forward to celebrating the launch with you and the final adoption of the MPI as a, a measurement uh, tool in, in Cambodia. We are now very grateful to invite His Excellency Andonu, uh, Andrea Tinoco, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Costa Rica. Okay. Okay, we can skip in. Okay, so, okay, so um, this week's um, our hearts have been uh, very moved uh, repeatedly by the terrible plight of uh, our brothers and sisters in Pakistan who are overwhelmed by uh, water uh, flood waters. And in Pakistan now, it is past midnight, I must say, and I am particularly grateful, therefore, to call upon His Excellency, Hassan Iqba uh, Chaudhry, uh, Minister of Planning, Development, and Special Initiatives, uh, Pakistan, who himself released uh, Pakistan's uh, MPI in 2016 uh, uh, to share his reflection. Next one. Okay, in so many countries across the world, um, some of the most innovative and decisive action is led. Has it started? Mm. Can we can we have the light on, please? It's led not by national leaders, but by those at uh, state and uh, local levels, uh, as we are experiencing in Nigeria, as we hope that in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our governors uh, will also lead this kind of change. I am therefore particularly uh, pleased to welcome His Excellency Alejandro uh, Murat uh, Inujoso, uh, governor of uh, Oxanka, uh, Mexico. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. To share how his state uh, which is one of the poorest, uh, used their MPI to drive a remarkable uh, reduction in poverty. Thank you. Well, we're very excited to be here. I'd like to thank um, Oxford University, OFI, and UNDP um, for giving us the opportunity to be here today. Um, Oaxaca clearly is a state uh, from Mexico. It's a state in the south. We have 4 million people that live in Oaxaca. And basically 51% live in communities that are around 2,500 people. Those basically are rural communities. The rest of the population are concentrated in urban areas. And uh, we have 570 municipalities. We have 153 that are governed by party systems and 417 that are governed by customs and usages. So basically, uh, that's our challenge. And uh, I am very happy to tell you that uh, we used the multi-dimensional poverty index, MPI, uh, first to be able to reach the poorest areas in uh, Oaxaca. And uh, for an example, what we did is we divided uh, the rural areas 
and the urban areas with the highest density of population. And what we developed as a strategy was two funds, clearly structural poverty funds, one focused for the rural areas and one focused for the urban areas. Now what we did is used, we also used the information from the National Council for Evaluation of Social Development Policy, which is CONEVAL, which is the institution that, that Mexico has uh, to be able to analyze where we have the biggest challenges in the deprivations of poverty. And in that sense, what we did was generate a correlation um, to be able to allocate all of those resources to those <clears throat> deprivations. Now, the results are uh, very meaningful. Let me tell you that uh, Oaxaca in this last six years has, uh, has faced the biggest earthquake that uh, Mexican modern history has faced, and it hit right in the heart of Oaxaca. We also faced the pandemic and four hurricanes. And the results, and this is why it's important, uh, when the tendency and the trend is to increment poverty, Oaxaca was able to reduce its poverty, the highest level in its history, according to Coneval. This is uh, from 216 to 220. Basically, we were able um, to reduce poverty by 90,000. 684 people overcame poverty and around 88,000 were able to overcome extreme poverty. Now we also were able to reduce poverty in our municipalities. And let me give you an example. Uh, one municipality called Santos Reyes Yucuna, which in 2015 was the municipality with the highest rate of, 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 of um, poverty after this funding came into place uh, in 220, it passed from being the number one to being 251 in Mexico. Now we have around uh, 2,500 municipalities around Mexico. So this is, I think, uh, very interesting and also I'd like to tell you that out of the 570 municipalities, 575 municipalities, basically 83.3% reduced poverty by an average of 7% points. And 439 municipalities are out of 570 municipalities, which is 77% were able to reduce extreme poverty uh, which is, I think, also uh, very interesting. Now, we also were able to uh, reduce uh, the gap in the educational gap by 86.5%. We were also able uh, to reduce access to basic housing services by 82.5%. We were also able to reduce the access of social security, we incremented it 81.2%. Now, let me tell you that in that area, Oaxaca has been able to grow an average of 6.8% after that pandemic. And we've been able to maintain a growth of six trimesters because we complemented clearly our uh, strategy to reduce poverty, generating economic development. And we established a fund in microfinance. Today, we've been able to disperse around $100 million uh, to more than 50,000 uh, economic units uh, down in Oaxaca. And that's what, ex what explains our social uh, security um, uh, index. Now, 66% also uh, in the municipalities were able to access 
housing quality and space, and 64.9% uh, the, the lack of access in food. So uh, these are the results that uh, Oaxaca has achieved. Uh, we've been able to establish a trend, and clearly we hope this can be a legacy. And uh, we've also focused on generating infrastructure uh, and regional projects that I think will be able to give Oaxaca in the medium to long term the economic growth to maintain this trend uh, in the reduction of uh, poverty. And clearly, uh, this also uh, contributes uh, to achieving the sustainable development goals of 2030. And clearly, in Oaxaca, we're convinced that uh, we can transform uh, the global and globalization by starting by transforming our local communities so that we uh, don't leave any behind, any person behind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency Alejandro. Uh, I recall uh, visiting Mexico. <laughs> Did I get that right? <laughs> and now Oaxaca. Oh, fantastic. Uh, in 2019, and also visiting Coniva. This is quite a similar work that we are doing in Nigeria, working with the Ministry of Boyata Planning and the Bureau of Statistics uh, uh, to do the work that we do within the MPI. At this time in the world, um, one of the biggest threats to multidimensional poverty reduction is the challenge of food security, of rising food prices, of stored grain deliveries, and threats to failed harvest. So it is it most apt that uh, we can invite a passionate and strategic thinker, His Excellency Gabriel Ferrero, the chairperson, ambassador at large for Global Food Security, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, European Union and Cooperation, Spain, to share uh, his remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, and moderator. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all protocols observed, dear Sabina and team of OFI. Being Spain a very proud member of the multidimensional poverty peer network uh, since 2019, I'm deeply honored to be here today and having the opportunity of being part of this high level event. And I thank the Republic of Nigeria and OFI for inviting Spain to be, to be part of it. Well, colleagues and uh, friends, Multidimensional poverty is the cornerstone of the Sustainable Development Goals. It's the heart of the paradigm shift of the 2030 Agenda. And I'm encouraged to see so that increasingly more and more countries, including Spain and other developed countries, as well as subnational governments, municipalities, states, are implementing and using the multidimensional poverty indices as the core of the dashboard against which we uh, assess the progress on the whole of the 2030 agenda. Excellencies, today I'm, I'm impressed by your progress. I look at Nigeria, Egypt, Cambodia, Pakistan, Bhutan, Mexico, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Peru, just those that have been here in the room. I hope that it didn't uh, leave anyone behind. And when I see your progress, Spain is encouraged by your leadership. Congratulations, Excellencies. Well, just as the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the current global food crisis, indeed, is a, a cost of living crisis beyond food crisis, is deepening our understanding of the importance of addressing the multiple impacts of shocks on people's well-being comprehensively, on nutrition, on education, on health, on the loss of livelihoods, especially now amongst those smallholder and family farmers that produce around 80% of the world uh, food and where women and girls are suffering most. So understanding these multiple deprivations, how they are suffered and how they evolve at the household level simultaneously as experienced by people is essential. And we know that works. We have the evidence that where MPIs are used and available and used, of course, policy responses are far more efficient and uh, impactful. So, Excellencies, indeed, I'm honored these days to serve as a chairperson of the Committee of, on World Food Security of the United Nations. 
And as we address at the committee the responses to this global food crisis, we seek words forward for long-term transformation on food systems to deliver on the SDG2 on ending hunger, but across the whole set of the, of the SDGs. And the policy responses to this food crisis we are deliberating at the committee these days address indeed the multiple interconnected and intersecting deprivations as they are experienced by people's households and families. Furthermore, the committee is starting now negotiations on a global agreement on policy recommendations to unleash the full potential of data for fighting against hunger, malnutrition, and rural poverty. I hope that the multidimensional poverty indices, such as the Women's Empowerment in Agriculture Index that is already available and used in many countries and the MPIs themselves will be at the forefront of this global agreement as they are already at, on the report of the high-level panel of experts of the committee that have delivered already their kickoff uh, independent assessment. So concluding uh, colleagues, let us keep us up Let's keep our, up our country's commitment to adopt and to use the MPIs. And I truly believe that this is one of the most cost efficient uh, measures to catalyze transformative and comprehensive progress on the whole of the SDGs. So thank you, Sabina, once again for your inspiration and leadership. And I hope to see the growing number of countries joining this movement to make multidimensional poverty operationalized as the key policy making tool. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ambassador uh, Gabriel, for such uh, kind and insightful words and for motivating us and also bringing to light uh, the importance of considering food security in understanding and addressing the MPI. Before we close this panel, I would like to cycle back to um, the video uh, uh, recording uh, from His Excellency Azan Iqba uh, Chaudhry the Minister of Planning, Development and Special Initiatives uh, from Pakistan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Excellencies, distinguished heads, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. It is indeed a pleasure to speak at this event arranged by Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network and Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. Excellencies, we are living in a world of numerous disasters, starting from COVID-19, Ukraine-Russia war, and devastated floods in Pakistan, which has affected 33 million people with more than 1,600 lives lost, thousands of livestock is lost, and thousands of houses are destroyed. All of these events have affected the common man, resulting in increase in poverty and disparity and created severe problems for country like Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Planning, Development and Special Initiatives in partnership with Oxford Poverty and Human Development Institute and UNDP launched Pakistan's first ever national report on multidimensional poverty on 20th June 2016. The study provides disaggregated statistics at district level and trend analysis across different time periods and regions. It was well received by government institutions at federal and provincial levels and gained widespread momentum amongst experts discussions on poverty and inequality. The findings of the report demonstrate the decreasing trend of multidimensional poverty in Pakistan and the simultaneous rise in geographical inequalities. While numerous insights were derived from the report that highlighted the considerable scope for further research in the area of multidimensional poverty in Pakistan. Currently, 30.3% of the population of Pakistan are multidimensionally poor. However, there are stark regional disparities 
in poverty across Pakistan ranges between 95% the worst to 2.5% the best. The proportion of people identified as multidimensionally poor in urban areas is significantly lower than in rural areas. Our national development vision, Vision 2025, also benefits from MPI estimation as it is aimed at reducing poverty in all its dimensions. However, Pakistan is confronting multiple pressing challenges in which sluggish economic growth, higher inflation, rising debt burden, balance of payment crisis, and adverse impact of climate change are critical challenges for development. In last seven decades, despite having made modest progress in living standards of its people, the risk of slipping into poverty is increasing due to unforeseen internal and external shocks. For example, high international oil and commodity prices pushing millions of people below poverty line due to high imported inflation at country level. The livelihood of millions of people after the recent floods has been vanished and we will surely witness downward trend in major socioeconomic indicators, including those covered under MPI. In this case, MPI will serve as a baseline for post-flood development interventions across the country. In the end, I would like to mention few other dimensions that can be included in the multidimensional poverty, such as road connectivity, provision of internet, mobile penetration, excess enrollment in higher education, enrollment attaining trainings. These indicators give access and increase in capabilities and opportunities to come out of poverty. I hope that today's discussion will further guide us in better utilizing MPI for well-informed poverty reduction policies. Thank you all. His Excellency's a resounding uh, message, which is both uh, technical and also quite moving, brings this uh, ministerial panel to a close. And I now hand over uh, moderation to Gonzalo uh, uh, Anedes uh, Likuna, under whose leadership Mexico uh, became the first country to launch an official MPI measure in 2029, uh, in 2009. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm fast forwarding to the future. And who is now the director of the MPPN, Gonzalo? Thank you to the panelists. Thank you, Sola. Um, I mean, poverty reduction is about uh, key policy decisions taken by governments, but it's also about the effort and ideas of key technical institutions and agencies. And now we turn precisely to the voice of national and international institutions. We welcome now. Um, His Excellency, Ms. Adeyemi Adeniran, Statistician General, National Bureau of Statistics from Nigeria, who will give us insights from the great work that Nigeria has been doing, measuring, and working to reduce multinational poverty. Welcome. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, ably represented by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning, Mrs. Dr. Zainab Samsuna Ahmed, the Honorable Minister of State, Budget, and National Planning, Your Excellencies, distinguished members of the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Review Network, I'm delighted to be here today with colleagues 
and fellow members of this important network of countries and organizations that are promoting and using the MPI to address the issue of poverty across the globe. It is incredible to see how the network has expanded since 2011, both in size and influence, to become the choice and the voice in measuring and addressing poverty world over. All thanks to Sabina and her team, who have dedicated their time and commitment to this cause and for the support they have been given to all the countries within the network, and in particular, support that we have received from them in Nigeria. Your Excellencies, for us in Nigeria, we have adopted MPI as a tool to measure the standard of living and the provisions that our people serve at. The uniqueness of MPI, for it to be able to decompose poverty into various dimensions and its ability to identify as well as locate the poorest people, make it a very useful tool for policymakers in their conversations and plans to reduce poverty in Nigeria. As mentioned earlier by my two ministers, we have been able to successfully conduct our first ever subnational MPI that report at senatorial district level with support from FGN, that's Federal Government of Nigeria, support from UNDP, UNICEF, and OFI that render technical support to us. The MPI survey that we conducted is one of the largest also survey to be conducted by any statistical office in Nigeria with a sample size of 56,610 households caught across 36 states of the Federation and FCT. The MPI survey report is being finalized and we are elated to see the result at senatorial district level. The four dimensions covered are living standards, education, health, and unemployment. For us in Nigeria, we included other variables that are peculiar to us, such as food security, water quality, underemployment, and security shocks. I'm glad to inform you that for this MPR survey that we have conducted, working with UNICEF, we have been able to compute child modern dimensional poverty index as well. We have made elaborate effort and plan for the launch and dissemination of the results, and most importantly, to tell all our stakeholders, both at the national and state level, on how to interpret and use the MPI results. I would like to commend the federal government for the support that they are giving to the National Bureau of Statistics to ensure the production, application, and use of MPI data. And this is an evidence of the commitment and genuineness of the federal government to reduce poverty in Nigeria. The national launch of the MPI survey result is planned to come up by the fourth quarter of this year. In the launching, we are going to be disseminating the results both at national and the six geopolitical zones that we have in the country. At the zonal dissemination, we are going to be engaging the state actors on one-to-one on, on one -one basis to tell them the result, how to interpret it, and to how to use it in such a way that they will be able to use the result to channel the resources and budget to address the sectors where the provisions have been noticed. We are working to establish Poverty Action Lab. And this is a center where all data, information, and other intellectual materials are going to be collated for government and other users to access data that relates to poverty in the country. 
Today, Nigeria is making a giant stride to generate and use MPI as policy to, to tackle poverty. For us in the National Bureau of Statistics, we continue to play our role in ensuring data are made available to government, to policymakers, private sectors, development partners, and the general public at large for them to perform their role towards reducing uh, poverty. And in the spirit of SDG, for us to ensure that no one is left behind. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention and God bless. Thank you. The next. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. And then you know, for giving us the view of the work done in Nigeria, especially the production and the computation of the child MPI. Thank you very much. Now, um, uh, I mean, UNDP has been an important partner of uh, MPI, as my friend, Mr. Howling Xu said before. Uh, we now turn to our regional, regional review, a view from UNDP. Mr. Rayma, welcome, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much, uh, Chair, for that um, introduction. Um, I'm here re representing um, the Director of the Regional Bureau for Africa, uh, Ms. Ahuna Etiakonwa, who unfortunately can't be with us, but I do have her remarks, which I will deliver on her behalf. So good afternoon again. Um, we at UNDP are deeply honored to be here today and to deliver this um, statement at this high level side event on the topic, driving multidimensional poverty reduction to secure well-being for all. I must first of all commend the federal government of Nigeria for curating the attendance of a list of eminent personalities, leaders and development practitioners who are all deeply involved in helping Nigeria to deliver on its commitments to sustainable development by 20. 30. Let me also congratulate Nigeria on the commitment to see the completion of the ongoing 2022 National Multidimensional Poverty Index Survey and to understand the country's true poverty status and use the findings to shape policies, influence resource allocation, improve beneficiary targeting, and understand the behavioral dynamics of its citizens. The timing of this crucial survey couldn't be more urgent as we are living at a time of great uncertainty and monumental change. UNDP's recent um, Human Development Index um, has declined for two years in a row, erasing the gains of the preceding five years and it is no accident that the world is being hammered by multiple crises all at the same time. The war in Ukraine coming hot on the heels of the COVID-19 pandemic, escalating global food insecurity, rising inflation, and a global climate crisis. While progress in eradicating extreme poverty has been incremental and widespread globally, poverty is still one of the biggest challenges even for a country like Nigeria, with over 90 million estimated poor in 2022. If we take a broader aspect of poverty, the multidimensional poverty um, approach, a larger number of people in the world, and of course Nigeria, are deprived of the basic necessities for a decent living, including access to clean cooking fuel, sanitation, food security, healthcare, and housing, just to name a few. Sustained inclusive growth is fundamental to reduce both income and multidimensional poverty. And global challenges and geopolitical tensions that supply, that disrupt supply um, chains and affect macroeconomic conditions are making it increasingly more difficult. Excellencies, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as an integrator of the Sustainable Development Goals, 
am pleased that UNDP has built a strong partnership with the government of Nigeria, its National Bureau of Statistics, and other development partners in providing support to Nigeria and other countries in their efforts to implement Agenda 2030. And by ensuring that surveys like the MPI are given utmost priority and the data obtained is used to create a comprehensive policy framework and subsequently actionable national and sectoral plans. The MPI provides us with data to help understand the needs of our communities and fine tune our policies to better suit them. With its extensive subnational disaggregation, this MPI survey could be used as a tool to identify the most vulnerable people across states and show how, and show how they are deprived and design policies and target resources more effectively. While data availability is fundamental, we now ask ourselves, how could we make a difference? With which data as our base, our next steps should be in evidence-based policymaking to implement these interventions that would lift millions out of poverty. UNDP is happy to continue to extend its support to achieve this noble objective. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you, uh, Mr. Raymond. Uh, for your words and to understand better MPI in general and in the African region. Um, UNICEF has been working to reduce poverty for children and, ad and adolescents, and they thus understand well the power of measurement. We invite now Peter Hawkins, country representative for Nigeria from UNICEF. Um, he's in the Zoom call. Let's see how it works. Um, thank you very much. I hope it does work. Uh, Your Excellency, the President of uh, Nigeria, very ably represented by uh, Her Excellency, the uh, Minister of Finance uh, and Budget and Planning, um, the Minister of State for Budget and Planning, my good uh, uh, friend and brother, um, may I rest on existing protocols. Um, I want to first of all congratulate the Government of Nigeria UNDP and OFI for uh, putting this event on. I think it's, uh, it's a fantastic opportunity to look at multidimensional poverty across the globe, um, and especially to Sabina and His Excellency, the Minister of uh, Finance, Budget and Planning, Prince uh, Clem, for their uh, foresight in, in, in putting this on. Um, in, in the first instance, as, as you, the moderator has said, you know, child poverty and the child poverty element is a crucial part of multidimensional poverty. Um, it will be updated um, by the multi-indicator cluster survey with 2021, which has just been completed and launched. So the richness in information will complement other um, areas of uh, the multidimensional poverty and other areas of, uh, of um, research that has been completed in, the, in this area. Uh, in the, uh, at the time of COVID. Um, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the Statistician General and the NBS for the amazing work they have done to try and bring all of this uh, together in one coherent and uh, policy-driven uh, data set, which allows Nigeria uh, to be able to look uh, internally at uh, data and make decisions against that data. Um, what I'm also struck by um, with this uh, event is how we can learn from each other on multidimensional poverty. The body of evidence globally uh, is, uh, is massive. Um, I felt that when I was in Iraq before I came to Nigeria, um, and I'm sure I will feel that in, in Yemen as I as I leave uh, Nigeria, but the evidence in Colombia, Costa Rica, Bhutan, uh, Egypt, uh, and elsewhere will greatly inform how we here in Nigeria uh, look at the Human Development Index, how we look at multidimensional poverty, and how we respond to some of the crucial challenges, uh, especially around child poverty, um, that, that uh, using the experiences of many of these countries. Lastly, I think at this point in time, uh, it's great to see her 
Excellency, the Minister of uh, Finance, Budget and Planning taking such an interest is how do we prioritize investment um, for 2023? It's an outgoing um, administration, but an administration that needs to leave a legacy of investment in social uh, policy and social uh, protection. It's a government that has invested a substantial amount of money uh, and resources uh, in this area. Um, and its investment uh, in, in social protection is crucial um, to respond to the multidimensional poverty uh, report when it, when it comes out. Reaching those uh, who, who are um, unreachable in, in many other ways will be a critical element to it investment and further investment in education and health um, is, is crucial to ensure that multidimensional poverty can be uh, arrested um, because at the moment uh, that situation uh, in the post-COVID period um, is an area that, that uh, we have seen Nigeria is, is, is suffering from. I know the fiscal space is constrained, but um, multidimensional poverty index gives a powerful tool to ensure that prioritization where it is needed most uh, can uh, show uh, the investment um, by government uh, to be at its most critical. Uh, thank you very much. And once again, thank you very much indeed for putting this event on uh, for every child in Nigeria and especially those um, who are the 54% who are multidimensionally poverty constrained um, I'm sure this will uh, lead to uh, positive results. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Peter. It, it worked very well, not only the Zoom, but it is very clear from, from my point of view that Nigeria is a, an extraordinary, extraordinary example of how uh, the government, how uh, statistical uh, offices, and how an, an institution such as UNICEF and, and Ofi and others can get together and have these uh, very important MPI, especially the child MPI. Congratulations again to Nigeria as a whole. Uh, national planning ministers play a key role, not only in guiding the country's vision, but also in promoting and using key indicators to monitor development and improve decision-making in governments. We welcome the words of His Excell Excellency Jorge Ivan Gonzalez, uh, we're happy that he's the new director of the Department of National Planning, the NEP, in Colombia. Uh, he has a video, I think. So, welcome. Desde Colombia. Good morning, Colombia. I'd like to greet everyone from us with this international planning department to the uh, multidimensional poverty peer network. I would like to begin by thanking Serena and her team at uh, Oxford University for their contributions, their significant contributions uh, for Colombia in the past 10 years to be able to consolidate the multidimensional poverty index. For us, it has been fundamental for several reasons. First, because the index has uh, uh, demonstrated uh, the theoretical strength and it has shown that from a methodological point of view, it is very powerful. Secondly, it has become a fundamental tool for economic policy. For us in our country, the fact of having the different dimensions of the index and the variables that may make it up have allowed us to organize our public policy and we have had measurements of the index as a starting point for developing strategies. This index has a virtue of the fact that it covers a very wide uh, range of public policies. So for our ministries in general, and for the activities that uh, the National Planning Department carries out, this is a vital tool. We are able to monitor every single one of the variables of the index, and it is a very 
very powerful tool to demand each of the ministries to show progress in each indicator. The index has also proven to us the, the there are huge gaps around the country. Thanks to each of the components of the index, we've been able to observe that Columbia, on average, is relatively well. But once we start to disaggregate to the measurements of the municipalities and regions, the differences in, in the differences in the country are substantial. In 2019, we had to calculate a measurement using the variables, the variables, and we were able to see the differences, which we have been able to measure and follow up on due to the fact that the index gives us which variables are assets now indicate variables that Thank you very much. Jorge Ivan Gonzalez has been key in Colombia for the MPI for almost a decade. If you remember, Sabina, we met him when Mexico and Colombia exchanged these ideas about MPI. And, and we have to, I mean, I have to underline the importance of, of these exchanges between countries. And the MPPN, the, 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 this network is about exchanging. And when we exchange uh, nicely, then there are very good things, very, out, very good outcomes. Between, um, between countries. So thank you very much um, to Colombia. The World Bank is, of course, a lead institution working to reduce poverty globally. Uh, they understood various decades, decades ago that it was important to measure poverty across countries. We welcome today Mariana Lugo, a senior economist for the World Bank, to share their work, their work on national MPI and SDG reporting. Thank you very much. I am deeply honored to be here sharing this panel with such distinguished guests. I thank the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network, Sabina Gonzalo, and the government of Nigeria for this very kind invitation. The well being is multidimensional, has long been accepted, and yet, some, somehow, it's taken us quite a bit of time to come up with measures. That, are, that countries can use to track progress on poverty reduction. The effort of UNDP and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative to support this process has been invaluable, as all seated here would recognize. Today, I want to share with you two ways in which the World Bank has been supporting this agenda in the recent years. First, the SDG indicator 1.2.2 that you all will probably recognize allows countries to report on the national multidimensional poverty measures. Together with UNDP and UNICEF, the World Bank and, and the World Bank, we have developed a system that helps countries with their reporting. As partner, partner agencies, we build a three-stage validation process that ensures the quality of the reporting and the approval of the country's focal points. We converge on four indicators that represent the, represents the incidence and intensity of multidimensional poverty, disaggregated by gender and age, and more recently but, uh, by urban rural, and perhaps for Nigeria, we'll also have to include uh, some national, um, but not yet, we'll, we'll work on it. And, but also a multidimensional poverty measure specifically designed for children if, if countries have one. The first time we reported the indicators over two years ago, there were 47 countries with identified national multidimensional measures. 
This year, we are happy to report that there are 75 countries in our database, and more are coming, as we heard from our colleagues from Cambodia, um, and I'm sure there are others that will come soon. We also produce jointly the three partner agencies, a roadmap for countries that wish to construct such measures. Second, the World Bank has been supporting countries in three different ways. In some cases, like in the case of Armenia or Lebanon, we accompany the countries throughout the whole process from formulation, design, and computation of national multidimensional poverty measures. In other countries, we work with our partner institutions, UNDP, OFI, UNICEF, providing financing, technical inputs, advice, of, often through their poverty committees, uh, such as in the case of Senegal, Colombia, Paraguay. Finally, we have a long tradition of supporting data collection efforts around the world to track pro uh, progress in many different dimensions of well being. What we've seen more recently is that governments are explicitly requesting our systems to expand their household surveys to be able to better capture the dimensions that could feed later into a multidimensional poverty index. We're honored to be part of this very important agenda. And once again, Thank you very much for the invitation, Sabina, Gonzalez, and ministers. Gracias, gracias, Mariana. No, thank you very much. Uh, the work of uh, the reporting process has been really, really important for our countries. Thank you very much. Um, the poverty reduction is about collective action, including investors and corporates. It is my privilege to introduce Jamie Coates, CEO of Wise Responder, who has been working together with Ofi, with our great John Hammock, in taking poverty reduction into the heart of private firms and financial markets. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you very much. And a special thanks to Nigeria and to the APPN and Sabina, whose work I stand on. Um, so I'm with Wise Responder. We are a data analytics firm created by Oxford University to get investors and the private sector engaged. Um, but first of all, I want to uh, note this week that there is a major battle war going on in the world. We have seen Pakistan in the most terrible situation, but we've also seen the Caribbean hit by climate change. But at the same time, recently, The Economist came out with a, on the front cover suggesting that only emissions matter, but not either people or governance. And we've seen the European Investment Bank this week say they will not fund gas exploration in Africa to provide energy that will reduce poverty without adding that they will help reduce poverty. So there is distrust and there is a huge amount of tension and there's a battle going on. And I actually think that all of you hold a great answer, a great solution, because through your hard work of defining the deprivations of your people, of locally defining within an international framework, you are creating the science that is creating poverty zero, that is as strong and as necessary as net zero. And we need this more than anything else. Now, the good news is the investment community is looking for this. They want your science. They want your deprivation metrics. And I'm pleased to announce that Citigroup has come out with a report saying that there is a need to connect $1.6 trillion of investment to help achieve the SDGs. And the way to do it is by using multi-dimensional poverty metrics. And they have committed half a trillion dollars to underwrite of social bonds. So that is great news. And just this week, the uh, CAF, the Latin American Development Bank, has said that they're going to put multi-dimensional measures into coffee plans. And we've seen companies across Latin America adopt that. So I'm asking you to invite us to talk to your finance ministers, invite us to talk to the development finance organizations, invite us into your COP27 uh, conversations, and invite us to talk to the private sector. I believe with your leadership, we will resolve this tension and we will use science to put poverty zero next to net zero and make a difference in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jamie, Jamie for, for your inspiration and your very important suggestions for our finance ministers. 
Um, let me invite Sabine Alcar to make the, the next uh, and final introduction for the presentation. Thank you, Sabine. Thank you so much. Um, our closing speaker is Kim Samuel, who is the uh, visionary behind the Samuel Center of Social Connectedness and a visiting scholar at OFI. Kim, you have the floor. Excellencies, ministers, honored guests, friends. I'm honored to be the closing speaker of this powerful event, co-hosted superbly by the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the 63 closing speaker of this powerful event co-hosted superbly by the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the 63 country multidimensional poverty peer network. I remember when the MPPN was launched in Oxford with only 16 countries. What struck me was the incredible commitment showed by person after person from Amartya Sen and former President Santos, who headlined the event, to the many talented assistants and directors. All participants had an intuition that if they joined their efforts and voices, they could lead change. But also, these professionals realized that by networking, they could support each other in the very hard work of fighting poverty. For each, Ending poverty was a sincere priority and a formidable challenge. Sometimes each of us tire. A network can encourage us to get up, reconnect, and try again. So I want to close by talking about the value of social connectedness, even to successful, well regarded professionals such as yourselves. Last week, I released a book entitled On Belonging, Finding Connection in an Age of Isolation, using cutting edge research, NGO experiences, voices of the protagonists and raw creativity. The book documents how important deep connections are to our psychological well-being. It also considers belonging across four core dimensions, relationships with other people, connectedness in nature, our ability to shape political and economic systems, and our own meaning and purpose. And it considers social isolation to be an often overlooked dimension of multidimensional poverty, something that this network may hope to, may wish to prove in the future, I hope. But what I observe is in the MPPN year after year, that this is a community of connection, one that supports and values professionals who wish to shape political and economic systems such that the pain of multidimensional poverty is healed Alongside many others, I continue to appreciate your shared commitment and your incredible competence. So I hope that through your efforts, multidimensional poverty is unraveled and eradicated and that energies and hopes are realized. And I hope that these MPPN events are also places we're pioneers in measurement and policy, communications and strategy, find encouragement, acknowledgement and true human community. I would like to thank everyone here and everyone watching. And I would especially like to extend my appreciation to Sabina and to Gonzalo for your vision.
to so much, Kim. Um, and, and Kim really brought in an important point at the closing moment that each of us as professionals need balance. We need to nurture our own families and our own well being so that we flourish and our professional energy. So have a particular possibility of not waiting for a sunny day, but bringing life changes even now. So today's speakers shared how they are striving and succeeding to do this. They called on us to remember and replenish our own wellsprings of wisdom and to address poverty without sacrificing profundity. And as a network, Kim reminded us to support and encourage one another. So we know we do not face these challenges alone. Thank you, Kim. Friends, we've been enriched in the last two and a half hours to experience the analysis, commitment, and planned courses of action of so many colleagues. In short, these leaders showed us in their addresses what the Secretary General acknowledged that the world needs. We need hope, he said, and more, we need action. Pivotal to this has been the generous hospitality of our co-hosts, the Federal Republic of Nigeria and UNDP. It was, as Her Excellency said in the President's address, it was their recognition that the it, poverty of, is of such importance this year that it should not be relegated to a virtual event, but must be in person with all of the organization and commitment that requires. And you have heard through the addresses throughout this event how with collaboration, with data, with policy, with strategic insights and partnerships, whether it's on behavioral activities, whether it's on impact evaluation or relationships with uh, academics, that the Federal Republic of Nigeria are indeed emerging as a leader on these issues. And we recognize that and look forward very much to the next phase of this work. All of the videos of this event will continue to be online and a summary will appear on the mppn.org and the OP websites. So thank you for staying with us, but thank you also for the work each of you do on these issues. With heartfelt thanks to the speakers, to the co-hosts in the Federal Republic of Nigeria and UNDP, to the OFI team, and to you, our colleagues and co-workers, I declare this event closed. <laughs>